and welcome to tonight's episode of Life Support. The only lifestyle show that continues to be dedicated to styling the life you continue to lead. And tonight I'll be showing all you blokes a top way to meet the women from the top end of town. I'll be giving you the drum on a guaranteed way to keep your traffic light squeegee business crowded with customers. And I'll be showing all you ladies how you can take a little golf knowledge from the bunker to the bedroom to improve his performance next time you're playing around. And in my men's health segment, I'll be giving some timely advice to all you men who are planning on getting married. Yeah, we've got all that and a whole lot more surprises in store for you too. So let's not loiter any longer. No, let's get started. Yeah, good day. When you're in pursuit of a lady friend, ever notice how they tend to judge a man? Not on the size of his heart or other organs, but on the size of his wallet. This leaves hard-working, modest earners like me with no hope of ever enjoying the company of these superficial, yet somewhat attractive and alluring women. But luckily, I've found a simple and effective way to assist the financially challenged amongst us to access these alluring ladies lusting for your manly companionship. Firstly, head straight down to the finance sector of your nearest CBD. Locate an ATM which rich business types use, and after a particularly busy period like lunchtime, simply shuffle through the discarded receipts. Now what you're looking for is a receipt from an account with a large bank balance. Simply place the receipt into your wallet and head back to your upmarket bar. The next time it's your shout, make sure you're in good sight of the lady friend you're after. As you pay for the drinks, the receipt should accidentally fall out. She won't be able to resist a glance at the balance. It's an instinct acquired at birth by this particular breed of woman. And given every woman's hidden desire for the working man, it'll be hard to hold her back. And there you have it. Another top tip to help you get your share of lady friends by appearing to be the perfect combination of brawn and bucks. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good in yourself. <sighs> Men have terrible aim, but you get used to a certain amount of it, don't you girls? I can handle it when he misses the bin. And I guess I'm used to him missing the toilet. <sighs> what I can't stand is when he can't get it in. He pokes around all over the place. It gets really annoying. Luckily, I know exactly what to do about it. There are some things that men understand very easily. Golf is one of them. On a golf course, a man will know where the target is from 100 metres away just by looking for the flag. So, here's the flag. Make it big enough and paint it red so it gets his attention. And this is the pole that leads all the way down to you know where. Let's test it, shall we? No, look, honey. There's the flag. Now just follow it all the way down. Well done, Felix. That's a hole in one. Pathetic, isn't it? This bloke has to beg people to let him wash their windscreens. Occasionally he gets a begrudging nod from someone who wants to make themselves feel better by doling out their loose change to a loser. But the problem is, the squeegee guy needs them. They don't really need him. After all, there's a button on their windscreen wiper that squirts water onto the windscreen and wipes it off for free. So, you've got to take the initiative. One of these water pistols will cost you about two bucks fifty from your local supermarket. Even cheaper with a five finger discount. This will cost you about three bucks. It's non-toxic finger paint. Ah, beautiful. Just the right colour and consistency. Now, watch and learn. I reckon there's about to be a bit of bird shit flying about 100 metres down the road from my new business partner, Squeegee Boy. And there you have it. With more bird shit flying than an Alfred Hitchcock movie, my Squeegee Boy now has more work than he can handle. Now that's private enterprise. See ya. How's it? 
You know, these days, more than one in three marriages ends in divorce. And for the man, a divorce can be a messy and expensive procedure. If you're not careful, you could lose everything. But don't worry, men. There is a way to preemptively protect your property without the unpleasantness of a prenuptial agreement. All you have to do is marry a post-op transsexual. That's right, men. Get yourself a woman who was once a man. You see, in the Australian courts, a transsexual's gender is still determined by their birth sex. And in this country, same-sex marriages aren't recognised as a lawful union. Meaning, if you do head for the divorce courts, your significant other is entitled to absolutely nothing. This way you can have a wife with plenty of fun bits, but none of the litigious bits. And if you do stay married, you won't have to deal with childbirth, cellulite or menopause, which may be just the reason you stay together. Bye now. I'll tell you what, Sigourney, that last segment with Dr Rudy was a bit of a shock. A shock, Todd? Yeah, I mean, I never picked Dr Rudy as someone who'd go in for that type of thing, you know? No, I'm afraid I don't. Well, I never would have picked Dr Rudy as, you know, the marrying kind, but suddenly there he is articulating at the altar. Oh, Todd, he didn't actually marry that person. That was just for demonstration purposes. An example for the people at home. So he hasn't gotten married? No, Todd, mate. Our good doctor is still very much on the market. Oh, that's all right then. It's just if he was getting hitched, you know, I kind of saw myself as being his best handyman. Well, if that day ever comes, I'm sure he'd ask you. Yeah, tops. And remember, it's your last chance to write to us at Life Support, SBS Locked Bag 028, Crow's Nest, New South Wales 1585. <sighs> all right, so... You're stuck in an office, slaving away for the man's meagre pittance, worrying about your job security, or lack thereof. Simply holding on to your job is a source of unnecessary stress for heaps of Australians. With every new week comes another round of redundancies and forced retirements, which just adds to the already increasing angst of everyday life. So, if the pressure to perform is so intense, why not go a step further than everyone else and make yourself indispensable? That's right. With a simple act of kindness every day, you can make sure you hold on to your position for as long as you want. All you need is a handful of painkillers. Doesn't matter which brand they are, as long as they're the strongest. From now on, Start every day by offering to make your boss a cup of coffee. Sure, the other employees will think you're a bit of a suck job, but that's their problem. Now, before you deliver the coffee, simply spike it with a sprinkle of paracetamol. The first few times your boss tastes his treat, he won't be aware of any difference. But by the end of the week, you'll have him addicted. Oh, there you go. Thanks. Then all you have to do is take the odd day off in the lead up to redundancies. Easy enough. Your boss will be so struck by the fact that his brew doesn't taste as true as the one you serve him that he won't be able to imagine work without you. And that's all there is to it. Turn your boss's addiction to coffee into an addiction to you. See ya. I wouldn't, like, sleep with a boss or anything, but, I mean, a certain amount of arse licking sort of doesn't normalise say arse licking. doesn't hurt. Oh, see that guy who just walked in? I had sex with him once. And the slime ball did the sneaky exit while I was sleeping. Don't you just hate that? Don't get me wrong, I love my share of one-off wooing and fortuitous flings. But no matter how casual your quickie is, you can't help but feel like you've lost face if he creeps out in the morning and never calls you again. And if you pick up your potential bed partner at a party, chances are you have mutual mates and you may meet again. But don't worry, because I'm going to show you how you can save face if you're ever faced with his face in the future. Oh, hi. Yeah, hi. All you have to do is stay awake after sex and steal his mobile. If he's in a real hurry to escape in the morning, he'll just throw his clothes on and creep out the nearest exit. 
when he realises he's misplaced his mobile, the first thing he'll do is phone it to see if he can find it. As you can see, I've organised to have brunch with two of our mutual mates. Oh, that'll be the hightailer now. Hello. Hello, Stavros. Yes, it's Sigourney. Yes, I have it. Yeah, I'm just having brunch with Emily and Siobhan at the cafe. Why don't you pop past? OK, see you then. I can't believe he called. Once he arrives, I'll quietly give him back his phone, but loudly declare that although last night was fun, I'd prefer it if he never contacted me again. He'll be relieved, and my friends will be too embarrassed to ask either of us what happened. Can you believe he called me the next morning? And that's all there is to it. Now you can keep having casual sex with the confirmation that he'll always call you the next day and the satisfaction that you've saved face even if you never have to see his face again. Yeah, g'day. The master bedroom can be a handyman's nightmare. These days it's not enough to have a room and a bed. Now you've got to have a walk-in wardrobe and even worse, an ensuite. The ensuite has become an essential status symbol for people who regard it beneath their dignity to trot down the corridor and pee in an ordinary bathroom. But if you're on a budget, you probably can't afford the costs of the plumbing, tiling and wiring that having an ensuite entails. So, take a tip from Todd and Muhammad. Don't move the mountain. Just move your bed into your existing bathroom. I call it Todd's Super Ensuite. It's super cheap, super luxury and super convenient. You can't get more convenient than this. And that's all there is to it. And if your aim's all right, don't even need to get out of bed. Well, Benny, here we are again, and I'm sorry to say I'm still receiving these. Oh, I thought after our little chat last week you weren't going to worry about those anymore. I uh, know, but now the threats are getting worse. Yes, so? Ah, oh, well, what's new with the latest, then? Well, apparently my time to meet has run out, but I couldn't have contacted her even if I wanted to. I don't know who she is or what she's talking about. Dear Life Support Team, love the show, etc. Sigourney's so pretty, Penny rocks, hot oh, tar anonymous. Todd is blah, blah, blah. Ah, oh, here we go, Dr Rudy. I have given you every opportunity to meet with me and resolve this situation without the glare of publicity but you obstinately refuse. What situation? I don't know what she's talking about. Shh. If you won't come to me, then you force me to come to you. So expect to see me face to face next Monday night. I'll be there when you least expect it. You see? Yeah, bring it on. Finally, we're gonna find out what all this crap is about. Let's get back to business. Why don't we watch this? What do you think? It's nice. It doesn't make my bum look big. No, you should get it. I'm going to try the striped one. I hate David Beckham. He wears makeup, gets expensive haircuts and gads about in a sarong. And all of a sudden, it's the trend for perfectly normal heterosexual men to become metrosexuals. Well, watch out, girls, because your new metrosexual man will be paying for his new look with the money he used to spend on you. What do you think? The stripy one does look better. Yeah, but the brown one highlighted my eyes. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for men spending up big on clothes, but I want him to spend money on my clothes, not his own. So if the man in your life is caught up in this obnoxious trend of heterosexual vanity, I'm going to show you a little trick to make him behave like a real man again. All you have to do is enlist your gay friends to make passes at your boyfriend. I'm going to the little boy's room. They'll be happy to do it. Gay men don't like metrosexuals either. It's hard enough knowing who else is gay without lots of heterosexuals acting as decoys. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's nothing. Let's go home. I wanna take a shower. I don't care how much a man likes his $150 haircut or silk Italian shirts. After the third pass in a day, he's seriously going to be questioning his masculinity. What would you like? Coffee? Tea? Me? Um, no thank you. Actually, we need to get going. Come on, Scorny. You going to try those on? No, that'll be fine. 
and that's all there is to it. He'll be reverting to polo shirts and chinos in no time. So if your man thinks he's a metrosexual, give him a wake-up call. Let him know a metrosexual isn't a straight man that looks good. It's a straight man that looks gay. There's a big difference. I've got a bit of gel in my hair and I had a shower and a shave this morning. I just like to be well presented. It's a bit disturbing. Yeah, it can get <laughs> disturbing <laughs> when it goes too far. Yeah. It borders on homosexual. Yeah. For some self-indulgence, why not? Penny, that was the landlord on the phone. He's coming around in 10 minutes for a surprise inspection. There's nothing that strikes more fear and terror into the hearts of a share house than a surprise inspection. With less than 10 minutes warning, there's no way you can clean up to six months worth of parties in time to escape inevitable eviction. Well, tonight, I'm going to show you how to escape premature eviction from a surprise inspection. Please, come in. What is all this clutter? I don't believe what oh, I said. What? Cut. Hey, didn't I tell you not to walk in during the middle of a scene? Sorry, Penny. Maybe I'll show him around the rest of the place first. That's right. Tell your landlord you're making a trot fest film. Tell him it's another quirky Australian comedy about two down and out doll bludgers trying to make ends meet. And tell him your art director has spent four days replicating every detail of life in the inner city slums of modern Australia. Good luck with the project. Thanks. Your landlord will be so impressed with your artistic initiative and faithful attention to detail, he may even kick in a few bucks to help see your vision to the screen. And because it's a short film, he'll never get to see it anyway. See ya. Well, my dear, here we are, and like always, we seem to be overloaded with letters this week. Oh, yes, we certainly are. So what have you got for us there, my good doctor? Well, it's a letter from Remy in Richmond, and she writes, Dear Life Support Team, Like most modern women, every now and again, I enjoy a little bit of oral activity, if you know what I mean. Yes, I think we do. Well, in that case, maybe you should read this one. She goes on to say, I have a couple of questions. The first is, how do you ask for it? It's not exactly ladylike to say, what about a head job? Or worse, eat me. Oh, Remy, you poor thing. The other bigger problem is, what if he doesn't want to? Put simply, can you give me the lowdown on what to do to make him go down? Please help. Poor woman sounds quite distressed. Well, not to worry, Dr. Rudy, because I'm fairly experienced in this area. Really? Oh, yes. So, Remy, and all you other orally ignored ladies, tonight, I'm going to show you how you can use some subliminal persuasion to guarantee you enthusiastic oral action every time. I think you've got the nation on the edge of their seats, Sigourney. Ever since they were five years old, men have been trained to eat anything wrapped in glad wrap. Mums would wrap little lunch and big lunch in this thin clear plastic. And at the end of the day, if anything remained uneaten, they would be severely reprimanded. This routine has been deeply ingrained into their brains. You see, Remy? Immediate and automatic response. Well, girls, next time you feel like being eaten, all you have to do is wrap yourself up in this. You'll be glad you did, because one look at your Glad Wrap treat will trigger that immediate and automatic response. My word, Sigourney. <laughs> so, just keep a roll of Glad Wrap by your bedside, and you can become his lunch whenever you like. I see. I wondered what that was doing there. Yes, anyway. So, Remy, just try that, and I guarantee you satisfaction every time. Well, Sigourney, another original life support idea. Now, let's see some more original ideas in the next segment. Yeah, g'day. I find boxer shorts are certainly more comfortable than briefs. There is one problem, however, and every guy knows what I'm talking about. Sometimes boxers just seem to want to ride right up your backside. You know the situation, guys. No matter how often you pull them south, they'll soon make their way north again. Some boxers just don't want to stay down. Well, luckily, there's something you can do to remedy the situation. You see, while your boxers always want to ride up, 
your socks will always want to slide down. The solution? Using some braces, simply adjust them to the minimum length and attach the bottom of your boxes to the top of your socks. And there you go. Your socks will keep your boxes from riding up and your boxes will stop your socks from sliding down. Now, you can feel confident to do whatever you need to do, knowing you're not gonna give yourself a mega wedgie. Well, I really can't believe it, but here we are at the end of another episode. As good a reason as any to have a glass of bubbly. All right. Gee, that's a bit indulgent, isn't it, Sigourney? Oh, Todd, mate, with all the good work we do, I don't think anyone could call us indulgent. That's right. I think we deserve a little bit of pampering. Yeah, right. So what's the celebration? Yeah, we haven't come to the end of the series yet. But since you ask, uh-huh, we... I have a bit of an announcement to make. Oh, you're kidding! No, he's not, Penny. I'm very pleased to announce that Sigourney has done me the great honour of agreeing to be my wife. <laughs> yeah, right! When did this happen? Just this week. So can I be your best man? Well, thank you, Dot. I would like that very much. Oh, and Penny, dearest, seeing as we've grown so close over the past few months, we you be my bridesmaid? Yeah, no biggie. So how did he pop the question? Well, I was Oh, about... let me tell, darling, please. It's just so romantic and ever since I was a little girl, I've always dreamt about retelling the moment of my proposal. Go on, my dear. Well, we're at Dr. Rudy's surgery. I was just picking up some test results following a routine checkup. And after he told me they were negative, well, he just proposed there in the surgery. And that was it. So where's the rock? The what? The rock. The diamond. The engagement ring. Oh, we haven't bought that yet. No, I would never buy something of that magnitude without my Sigourney being there. And that's exactly why I'm with you. So have you set a date? My word, we have. It's next Monday night and you're all invited. So make sure you join us next Monday night for a once-in-a-lifetime very special episode. That's right. It's the Life Support Wedding Special. And it's a wedding special I know you wouldn't want to miss. So make sure you're there next Monday night at the very special time of 9 o'clock. And in the meantime, why don't all you de facto's out there go and legitimise your liaison? Good night, Good night Australia. Australia. Gee, hope everything goes smoothly for Sigourney next week. Yeah, right.